In this video, I'm going to show how to use the interface WebML to carry out a molecular orbital calculation of the uh, nitrogen molecule and verify that the molecular orbital diagram is like what we have here shown in the figure. Uh, what is important is to recognize that uh, in the case of these uh, bonding orbitals that emerge from the overlaps of the 2p orbitals, uh, the pi's uh, bonding, those uh, are lower in energy than the sigma bonding, and that is opposite to what happens to uh, other homonuclear diatomic molecules like oxygen and fluorine. Okay, the first thing that you need to do is make sure uh, that if you're out of campus, you actually connect through a VPN. So if you don't have the uh, Pulse Secure software, you need to install it, and then you have to uh, connect, okay, like this. And uh, we have to log in, and you need here a network password. Uh, you will get prompted to do a two-factor authentication, which is what I'm doing right now. And uh, I just entered the two-factor in the uh, phone. And then now we actually have a virtual private network connection to the WebML computer on campus. So you can now connect from anywhere in the world. All right, so uh, what you do next is you just go to uh, the WebML interface and log in with your account. If you don't have an account, uh, I can open one for you, so please just let me know. Okay, so you connect, and then the next thing that you do is you uh, create an EGL for the uh, end to molecule. And to do that, we simply go to the predict table and draw uh, two nitrogen atoms, connect them with a bond, and then we're going to adjust the bond length uh, to something reasonable. All right, so that bond length. Uh, this is a, a 0.8 Armstrong, and in reality, in the experiment, is about one point, uh, a little bit over one Armstrong. So we were actually going to start with a guess of one Armstrong. All right. Uh, from here, we uh, submit the calculation, uh, and we're going to be using the Gaussian computer program to solve the electronic Schrodinger equation. Uh, so that is uh, that. And then here, uh, you need to select first uh, geometric optimization coupled with vibrational frequencies. So this pull-down menu, you would uh, select Optimize plus Vibrational Frequencies. Okay? And it, all, it is also important to uh, select a reasonably accurate method and basis set. So uh, uh, my suggestion here is to use density, density functional theory, uh, B3LYP method, with uh, uh, a reasonably accurate basis set like CCPVDC, which stands for Correlation Consistent Polarized Valence Double Theta Basis Set. All right, so after we have selected all that, uh, then we submit the geo for calculation, and this is going to take just a few seconds. If we re refresh this, still running, uh, but after just a couple of seconds, it should actually finish. Here we go. Uh, so this calculation has taken 6.3 seconds. We click on nitrogen, and then we can see what the geometric optimization and the vibrational uh, calculations have are showing. All right to show uh, to see the uh, geometric optimization, you can come here to these geometry sequence energies and then uh, decrease the animation speed, and then click on the movie icon. Right. So once you click on the movie icon, this is going to take you through the optimization steps uh, all the way to the final geometry, which is step 5, and you can see how the sequence has been from the first point or initial guess of one Armstrong uh, uh, to the optimum geometry that we have uh, right there. Okay. So uh, you can also come down and look at uh, these uh, vibrational nodes, and this is going to allow you to see uh, how nitrogen vibrates. It only has one normal mode of vibration, and it has a vibrational frequency of about 2400 wave numbers. Uh, now you can click on this movie and then see how that vibration looks like, right? So this is a diatomic molecule. The only uh, vibrational node would be a simple stretch. You can reduce uh, the animation and the amplitude, and uh, usually have the amplitude uh, and uh, perhaps have the speed, uh, usually it's pretty good to uh, get a pretty good description of what the vibration of nitrogen is. But here no, we're not discussing vibrations, instead we actually want to calculate the molecular orbital diagram and then draw those molecular orbitals. So what we're actually going to do is take the geometry, uh, the optimum geometry that we, we just uh, obtained, and then calculate the orbitals with that optimum geometry, and that is, that is important. I guess we uh, come here to this uh, window and hit a new job using this geometry, and that is the optimum geometry. And then uh, we are ready to calculate those molecular orbitals. Right? So uh, that will be the geometry uh, of the optimization. We can actually uh, test 
that this is the optimum geometry by just uh, doing the just and figure out what the bone length is. Notice that there's one 1.1 1 .1, uh, Armstrong or so, right? So uh, that is the optimum geometry according to this B3 LYP uh, CCP BTC. Great, so without optimum geometry, uh, then we can uh, uh, submit the calculation of the molecular orbitals. This is still going to be uh, using the Gaussian uh, code. And then uh, we have to utilize the same level, so B3 LYP and the basis set CCP VDC, but now our uh, calculation is going to be molecular orbitals. Okay, so we select that in the menu, and uh, we submit this uh, for calculation. It's going to take just a few seconds, right? So uh, complete in less than one second. And now we are ready to actually look at the molecular orbitals. All right, so that is the uh, molecule. Uh, we drag down to see uh, those orbitals, and here is the list. Uh, uh, you can actually animate them uh, by simply just looking at the loops uh, here, but notice uh, uh, what we have right here. This is important. So nitrogen uh, has 14 electrons. Nitri the molecular nitrogen has 14 electrons. That means that you're going to have seven orbitals that are doubly occupied. right? So that is the seven orbitals that are doubly occupied. That is the occupation, and these are the energies of the orbitals. right? So now we're actually ready to come here to the uh, molecular orbital diagram and verify that this is true. right? So that will be the lowest energy orbital. That is the next one. And then you will have uh, uh, the uh, two pi's and then the sigma. Uh, neglected in this diagram is uh, the orbitals that come from the 1s uh, molecular orbitals. Again, that is not drawing this diagram. They will be even lower in energy. But then you have uh, the five next orbitals, right? So when we come to WebMO, that will be uh, the sigma 1s. That is the sigma 1s star. This is the sigma 2s, which is this one. Then we go, uh, that is the next one is the sigma 2 star, that is an anti-bonding sigma orbital, and then we should have the pi's and then the sigmas. And you can clearly see the calculation uh, seems to follow what we have here, because the pi's uh, have exactly the same energy, right? So those are the ones, pi to px, pi to py in this graph, they have the same energy, and they're a little bit lower in energy uh, than the sigma, right? So that is that is uh, seems to bode quite well. Uh, again, we can go and try to visualize them uh, by just uh, here on this um, magnifying glass. And again, what we should find is that this should be a sigma bonding orbital. That is the highest occupied molecular orbital for uh, nitrogen, right? So we click on the magnifying glass. According to this diagram, that should be a sigma bonding. So let's actually verify that that is true. We hit on that magnifying glass, and you can clearly see that is a sigma uh, bonding orbital. That is the uh, highest occupied molecular orbital, which again, uh, again, uh, leads confidence that this is the correct diagram uh, for nitrogen based on a quantum mechanical calculation. We can continue to picture here uh, other orbitals. Those should then be the pi bonding, a little bit lower in energy, right? So notice that here you have one, you twist it around, and that is your beautiful pi bonding molecular orbital, one of the uh, two that you have. And that is the other one, right? So they are perpendicular to each other, those two. And if you go deeper, this will be uh, the sigma 1s bonding, sigma 1 star anti-bonding, sigma 2s, and sigma 2s star. All right, so in this video, I've showed you how to use the uh, WebMO uh, interface to connect to Gaussian and be able to calculate molecular orbitals for uh, molecular nitrogen. Of course, now you can take this to uh, and apply it to any molecule that you wish.